Ben Stiller. Here is Jeff on the toll-free in Billings, Montana. Hi, Jeff, and welcome to CBS Late Night. Hello. Hi, thank you, Tom. You're welcome, sir. First of all, Ben, uh, congratulations on the great success of uh, Something About Mary. Thank you. Marvel Tough. Hey, thank my you. question is, uh, between you and your dad, Jerry, of course, we all know, mm -hmm. we all got great success from Seinfeld. Um, who gets more recognition out on the street, you or your dad? Ah, who gets more recognition? Well, <laughs> it always used to be that there was, um, I think, uh, it used to be that people who knew my dad had no idea who I was, and people who knew who I was didn't know who my dad was. But then with Seinfeld, it kind of, you know, it's such a huge show, and, yeah. and it's just reached so many people. Everybody knows my dad is George's dad, and now he's got a new show on the air. And I, you know, I'm doing okay. I don't really keep track of it, but um, it's, uh, you know, it, the television, I think, you know, he's, he's huge with that TV show. Mm -hmm. So I got to say my dad. I got to say my dad. Now, Jeff, what was your favorite scene in the, There's Something About Mary? Has to be the hair gel scene. <laughs> I think every guy in America. <laughs> Oh, so hard. That was great. I you, loved it. You identify with that scene, Jeff? <laughs> it never happened to me. No? Come on. Tell me the truth. <laughs> but yeah, Marshall Tavern, a great success, Ben. And I Thank think you're you. a great actor. Oh, thanks very much. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Okay, Jeff. And incidentally, for everybody who is celebrating Rosh Hashanah, Happy New Year to all and uh, great success and happiness. And Jeff, thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you, Tom. Okay. Good night, sir. Mm -hmm. Bye. I read about your pop when you were 10 years old. He he sent you to a, a magician to learn magic. <laughs> yeah. Oh, kids. Well, I was into. I, yeah. You like magic? Kids, oh, I love magic. Yeah, oh. I love magic too. I, as a kid, and there was a there's a famous uh, magic store in New York called Lou Tannen, where you, everybody gets their magic supplies. So he took me there, and I was, I wanted to learn about it. So they recommended a guy named Slidini. Slidini, the yeah. great Slidini. Now, have you heard of this guy? Slidini? Yes, I have. He was a real guy who was a. Uh, very good close-up magician. That's right, sleight of hand. Yes. So um, I, I did a few lessons with him. He lived in this apartment in Hell's Kitchen. In this, uh, in this, I guess he hadn't worked for a while, but he was, uh, he, uh, he was an older gentleman, and he, he was very careful. He taught me, you know, he, he, with great care, how to do some, some really uh, incredible tricks. I was like 10 years old, though. I was just not ready for the... You know, magic takes commitment. It takes practice. It takes... Uh, Practice talent. is the key word. You must do yes. it over and over till the moves are flawless. Right. My mom took me to see Blackstone, the great magician, when yes. I was a kid in Milwaukee. And at halftime, they sold Blackstone's magic kit with all the illusions, supposedly, he did on stage. And we took them home. I took them home. My brother and I would practice for hours and hours, and you still couldn't really do it right. No, it's, it's no, tough. no. It takes, it takes years. But, uh, but it was fun to practice. I used to practice on my sister. What was the trick? What, what, what was the... He had a trick that was, um, his famous trick was he would take a Kleenex. He would, like, take a Kleenex and, um, not to, I'm not going to do it because I don't... What do you mean you're not going to do it? No, no, there, <laughs> there just happens to be a Kleenex here. This isn't, like, some preset thing because it's really, it's not, I don't want to say it. But he would, like, take a Kleenex and, like, bunch it up and then put it in his hand and then, you know, make it disappear. But, like, the whole trick of it was he would do it for an audience would be that, like, you and I would be... Um, on the, you know, like here, the audience would be over here, mm -hmm. and what he would do, he would put it in his hand, but he'd be flipping it over their head. Like oh, that, I see. Okay. And he wouldn't see it. Yeah, but, you know, so it took... Well, it was, was that like, the trick? You just flip it that way? You couldn't tell, could you? <laughs> <laughs> you guys, isn't amazing? <laughs> um, but no, but... <laughs> I told you I never saw the trick. I just was <laughs> trying to explain to you what the trick was. Um, but my sister, I used to practice that on my sister, uh -huh. and I'd have to get up like right in her face because the whole thing was about like your line of vision, so that you like like you yeah. could flip it right above your eyes, yeah. so you wouldn't see it. So I used to do it, and I and of course I had no subtlety. I was you know ten years old. And, I was, and then the, did you do the patter too? Oh yeah, yeah, the bad patter, the trying to you know because you know the whole thing was about you have to tell a story, and it's all those old magic books where they you know it's like it's yeah. all outdated, like so you make up these stories about. Three men were walking down the street when it went exactly. I just would do, I was, you know, so bad at it. But my sister would say, oh, you can do that, that trick again where you almost punch me in the face. Because, <laughs> I, because I just was had no subtlety about it. And she would just taunt me. You know, they've constantly. got a great place here in town. I don't know if you've ever been there called the Magic Castle, where they do sleight of hand and well, close-up. You know what? I have been. I was there recently. I was there last week because my sister... Had a had a birthday party and she said I want to go to the Magic Castle and they oh, have it's a, a marvelous night. Have, isn't that incredible? Oh, it's a marvelous and night. And they had this Houdini, Houdini seance room. Right, have you yeah. been in that oh, room? Oh sure, great show, great show because they have this uh, the, the the table levitates and the, and crazy. No no, weird. I've done a couple of shows up there for NBC and CNBC where right. we've had them do close up magic. Right. And we take the videotape and slow it down, try and catch the moves. You can, they're so good you can't 
then you can't see what they're doing. You can't catch them. Yeah, they're that's good. incredible. With sleight of hand. And they kind of walk through the halls of the place and people are doing tricks. It's great. And what was your first TV appearance? Your, I, your, mom, your mom used you on, uh, what was it, uh, Kate, Kate McShane? Yes, Kate McShane. Yeah, yeah that was a, um, it was a series that she had on the air on CBS for about, uh, I, it was probably half a season it ran in 1975. And I That's was, a long run here at CBS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it kind of runs in my family. My show went 13 episodes, and my dad is the most successful of us all. With that. But uh, I, I played Susan Strasberg's son, she, uh, Lee Strasberg's daughter. She's mm -hmm. an actress. And uh, it, was a, it, was a, it was like a lawyer drama show. My mother was a lawyer. And I just remember being, I was so nervous. I mean, and there was a, I remember waiting to go on, and they had this uh, off the set, they had a little cue light a light that goes off that they put off camera so that you know where you're standing off camera so that you can know when to go on because you can't hear what the actors are saying Understand. in the other room and i just remember just watching the cue light and just being you know when this red light went on just being it was similar to my mike douglas experience of playing the violin on the air just you know one of those crazy things that as a kid you go you know it kind of it's just such pressure you know, it's crazy pressure. Oh, I know, pressure. I know. But, um, and like, did you meet big stars and stuff? I met some stars. I met William Shatner on the, That's uh, an event. On the lot. Well, for me, it was a huge event. <laughs> Why? That's, okay, uh-oh, did I open up the William Shatner? <laughs> Touched uh, another nerve. There it goes. <laughs> and the ground opens up. <laughs> and the joke begins. Uh, <laughs> I just want to see him laugh about the, the private William Shatner joke. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I met him because he was doing, uh, he was doing Star this. Trek. No, no, this was after Star Trek. I was a huge Star Trek fan, still am. Uh, he was doing a show called The Barbary Coast. Do you remember this no, show? No, I do not. Okay, a short-lived series where he was an undercover detective in San Francisco in the 1880s. There's a concept for you. And he was, uh, he would get into disguises, right? Mm -hmm. So I, when I met him... He loves disguises. Does he? Yeah. He told me that during... I, I'm not by the way, I love to so. interview William Shatner. Please believe me. Please believe me. The only problem is that once you, once he starts to talk, you can't get a word in it because he gets so enthused about everything. He gets very excited about Does things. He? Yeah. Does he? Well, yeah. I, he, I met him. I met him, and uh, he was in makeup, though. He had this, like, giant bulbous nose and a big handlebar mustache, and, and it didn't look like William Shatner. So as a 10-year-old who wanted to meet Captain Kirk, I was very disappointed yeah. because I was meeting, yeah. like, um, I don't know, he looked like... Um, didn't didn't he look like Enrico Caruso or something? It was bizarre. Not that Enrico Caruso has a big nose. <laughs> I don't know what, what where that comes from. It's all right. Caruso's gone. Yeah, on. right. But it just didn't it didn't look like <laughs> William Shatner. In any event, uh, we're chatting tonight with uh, Ben Stiller, who has personally met William Shatner and has appeared on the Mike Douglas Show in the basement studios of KYW TV <laughs> in Cleveland or Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Ben He's is in Cleveland now. I think we established that. Bill, uh, no, uh, no. Uh, Mike is living. I don't know in, where Shatner is now. Mike is living in uh, Chagrin Falls in suburban. In Cleveland, and, and I hope he's very, very happy there. Okay. No. So it's a lovely, lovely part of the world. In fact, I worked in Cleveland when Mike was still was just starting out there in Cleveland with Rick Rosner, who became a huge producer in television. Right. When when I was a kid, he was passing out tickets on Superior Avenue in Cleveland to go to see the Mike Douglas show. Really? And people were snapping them up. In the, 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 the Cleveland version of the that well, show. the Cleveland version, yes. Right, okay. Yes. Not the Philadelphia version. Philadelphia version right. was the yeah. Philadelphia yeah. version, okay. and there was a Los Angeles version. Right. Oh, there was a Los Angeles. Many, version. many, okay. many, many versions. Versions, versions. Yes, I know. Commercials coming now. Uh, we're going to get to Permanent Midnight, which is a serious topic, right? Okay. Yeah, I'd like to. Yeah, and right. and a movie that that you and I appear in together. That is correct. Uh, the picture is called Permanent Midnight, and we'll be right back with Ben Stiller and you on the toll free, uh, as time permits, after these messages. <laughs>